what's going on everybody so in today's video we are back with part two of high flow fittings diy so if you haven't seen the first video be sure to check it out and pretty much what this video is about is just testing high flow fittings and modifying them to make them even better if you just have regular fittings and also upgrading your air compressor i guess i should say maximizing the performance and getting the best out of your air compressor so you can see here that um, what we've done is we've removed one of the couplers right there so in the first test I had two couplers you can see that's the first coupler there where the arrows pointing to and um, I removed that and you can also see that with that coupler I had um, a air fitting in there that wasn't high flow and so now you can see I have the new fitting which is just a straight pipe and I've drilled it out as well so right there you can see that's what the old setup looked like where I had two couplers and I just had two air fittings that were not high flow and um, it was just a mess so I have the straight pipe I'm gonna keep the air filter because I believe everyone should have an air filter on their air compressor and so it wouldn't, you know, kind of just throw off the, the test results. So I'm going to keep the air filter and pretty much everything else is, you know, good to go. I got the straight pipes going throughout the system and everything is high flow. I've drilled out all the fittings. Uh, so the hoses has the high flow fittings. Everything is just high flow and ready to go. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to test, we're going to do the test over again from the first video and pretty much everything is going to be the same. So I'm going to set it up for 100 PSI right here and then we're going to test our first one which is just a stock air fitting so there's no modification to it at all whatsoever. And we're starting our test and we're just going to see how long it takes for the air to go from 140 to 120. And as you can see right there, it's 11 seconds. So that's gonna be our baseline test. That's our control. And I'm gonna show you guys right here, once this, uh, there we go, let's get it uh, orientated right there. Yeah, you can see that this is a stock fitting. And so the hole is very small. Now this is the fitting that we drilled out. So if you saw the first video, I showed you how to drill out the hole and now we're gonna test that with the straight pipe, but we still have the coupler on the end after the air filter. So as you can see right there, we get eight seconds. So eight seconds and now we're gonna test the aftermarket fitting. So if you're uncomfortable with drilling out your own fittings, then the aftermarket fitting is a good option for you. And now we're gonna test that and see what we come in at. And uh, once again, we're taking it from 140 to 120 at 100 PSI, and we get eight seconds. So it's a little quicker than the DIY, which that's should that should be right because the, the aftermarket one, the purple one, is a little bit wider. The diameter uh, is a little bit bigger, so, but not my not by much. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the coupler after the air filter. So we're gonna get rid of all the couplers because uh, pretty much I realized that I didn't need them. So I went out and I bought this 90 degree um, fitting and I drilled it out of course. And that seems to be my thing, I just love drilling out. And I love using this cross slide vise. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the video on that. but. What I ended up doing was I bought two 45s instead of using that 90 because the 90 was just so small, whereas the two 45s are still bigger and they're both quarter inch and they both give you 90 degrees. So you can see there the opening on the two 45s is just a lot larger compared to the opening on the 90 and they're both quarter inch. And of course I drilled it out as well. I actually drilled out the threads so that when I weld them together, the air will flow smoother. I also drilled out the male connector as well. So I drilled that out so you can see that that's bigger. Um, so yeah, I mean, really I just <laughs> went all out on this uh, project here. And if you don't have a welder, then this is gonna be your setup. You're gonna take two male fittings, 
or connectors and connect them to your 245 fittings. And it's going to look like that. So you're still going to get a 90 degree um, angle, but it's just going to be a little bit bigger. So if space is a problem, then you might want to consider welding or getting them welded. And uh, I will be selling um, the welded version. So look out for that in the future. And so for welding, I'm using solar flux instead of back purging. I know I'm going to hear it in the comments, um, you know, about sugaring and welding stainless. But don't worry, solar flux works just like back purging without the added argon. So just kind of mix it up just like that with a little bit of alcohol and work it on the inside, let it dry, and then you're good to go for welding. So now that these are dry, I'm going to go ahead and set it up and start welding just like that. I'm going to go ahead and tack it up. And then now that they're all tacked up and ready to go, I'm going to just like really just start uh, laying down a bead of welds or stack of dimes that I'm not really good at. I'm a little rusty with my welding because uh, I just haven't made any welding videos. So look out for that. I'll probably bombard everyone with a bunch of welding videos. So you can see there I'm using a pulse technique uh, and I'm, I added some more fittings just to keep the heat out. But you don't have to pulse. i uh, just kind of showing some different options. You can weld straight and just move really fast or you can just pulse if you want. But um you can see that uh, either method works. And I did grind down the uh, welds just to make sure that um, everything was good. And then I left some welds to show you right there. See my technique, it's, it's okay, I gotta get better. But I'm happy with it and there's some nice coloring there so I didn't overcook the piece and then I just went and cleaned it up with a wire brush right there. So now we're all set and no, the part doesn't leak air but that is one thing to consider when you are welding is to make sure that you get good penetration so that you do not have any leaks because that fitting is going to be under a lot of pressure so it's important that um, when you're welding you don't get any leaks or you don't uh, leave any holes I guess like pinholes in your weld so grinding down is uh, a good way to make sure you don't have any pinholes so you can see that's the 90 degree on the air compressor right there and it's just such a harsh bend that it's just in a little bit in, a, in some ways it's kind of restricting airflow just because of the harsh bend whereas the 45 gives you a nicer smoother radius so now we're going to start that test again and look you can see that it just kicks i mean there's just so much more airflow going and uh, this is the control so this is the stock unmodified air uh, fitting and it comes in at eight seconds remember the first test was at 11 seconds so eight seconds on just the stock fitting i mean so it seems like the performance is not in the fitting but in the you know redu reduction of couplers so this is the modified version and look six seconds everybody six seconds that's just crazy and so now we're going to test the modified version, right? This is the aftermarket. I'm sorry that we're testing the aftermarket version. And we're going to see where that comes in. And it's the same. We're going from 140 to 120. And boom, six seconds again, everybody. So in conclusion, the best way to get the most performance out of your compressors to reduce as many couplers as possible, bore out all pipe fittings and use high flow air fittings everywhere you can or anywhere you can and you'll get the maximum performance out of your air compressor so you can see right there the 45 doesn't take up too much space and just be sure to use teflon tape and you can see that's the 90 that we replaced it with and you can just see that the 45 is bigger has a nice smoother angle and everything works out and your compressor is happy so thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you next time